Hallelujah. Uh, you know, the fowls of the air and the fish of the sea. He gave, told him to be fruitful and multiply and have dominion. Okay? Um, dominion means it's your domain. It's your, your realm of authority. Okay? And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're back up. Shanda. Okay. Um, and so God gave Adam authority to rule over the earth. It was his domain. Now, we have, we have speculated that that authority or that, that, um, that authority was given for a specific period of time. And looking at um, the history of man from Adam to Christ and from Christ to now, um, we've estimated that dominion over the earth was in, in the realm of about 6,000 years, plus or minus. Okay? <clears throat> that's only that's why, because Jesus hasn't come back yet and established his, his millennial kingdom. Okay? So we don't know the final time frame there. All right? And there's internal evidence, as we see from the Bible. Um, you know, remember the man with the, uh, the demons? The madman of the Gadarenes? And Jesus came. And, and the demons said to him this. He said, have you come to cast us out before the time? Okay? See, they, see Satan, the, the demonic world, the, the spirit world, knows there's a, there's a time that this ends. These things end. This authority ends. Have you come to cast us out before the, or cast us into the pit before the time? Because why hadn't God already thrown Satan into the pit? Why isn't he already there? Okay, well, that's because Adam had authority and God, and Adam was God's under ruler. And uh, I mean, we, we could take right here and jump into this and go to the authority of the believer and spend six months. We're not going to do that. Okay, maybe. <laughs> you never know with me. You know, I started the series a few years ago. I thought it was going to be six weeks. and It was two years on a Wednesday night. I'm like, wow, you know, uh, just never know what you're getting into sometimes. So anyway, when God gave Adam authority and Satan came and challenged him, you know, in the garden, hath God said that thou shalt not, you know, because you know, he, he knows in the day you eat it thereof, uh, you'll be as gods, knowing both good and evil. And, Adam, and Eve took the fruit and ate it and gave it to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them were opened, and they knew they were naked. Okay? And at that point in time, Adam was born again. Eve was born again, or they were born again from life unto death. Satan became their spiritual father. And we know they became, that, Adam, that Satan became the spiritual father of humanity by looking at certain scriptures. Um, you know, um, John 8, 44, I believe, Jesus speaks, and he makes this statement. He says, ye are of your father, the devil. <laughs> that goes over big. You know, we're all God's children. What well, the Bible says, your daddy is the devil. <laughs> you know, that just, you know, people just don't, they kind of go, well, well, that's not nice. Well, the Bible says that your daddy is the devil. If you're not born again, you know, and it says, in the lust of your father, you will fulfill. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay. So, Jesus even said, talking to people, that their daddy was the devil. And that just make you feel good. But now, the, but the Bible calls the born again children of God. So this, this, um, <clears throat> this universal concept that we're all God's children is erroneous. Now, we, God did create Adam in the beginning, and we've all proceeded from that creation. Adam was given the right to procreate. Okay, from original creation. But because of sin, he passed on the sin nature. And that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, ye must be born again or born from above. And can a man enter into his mother's womb the second time? Maybe born. Jesus says, are you a master of Israel? And know not these things over in John 3. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay? And so we, we go there and we look at that. Um, but the, the word reveals to us and the facts of life bear witness that Satan is Lord of natural man. That's why men can do evil things that they do. No one of God can do the evil things that people do. There's no way. 
You couldn't just go cut people up and mutilate them and, and rape little, little children and, and uh, do all the things that, that perverse humanity does and be of God. That, that kind of evil, see, that kind of evil doesn't come out of God. And you know, people look at stuff and say, well, I don't understand why people did this. Well, their, their, their social life was messed. No, no, no. You don't go off and kill 35 people because your social life was messed up. It's evil. That's the very nature, okay, of darkness. And so um, Christ showed us that he recognized that Satan was the Lord of natural man. In John 14, 30, Jesus says this, The prince of the world cometh, and he hath nothing in me. In other words, he has no authority. He has no power. I'm not born in the same genealogy that all man's been born, which is out of Adam. Remember, that's why his birth had to be a supernatural virgin birth. It could not be after the regular order of things where, um, where natural man was the natural, fa was the natural father of, of Jesus Christ because he would have been born into sin. But because it was supernatural, behold, a virgin shall conceive. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He bypassed the Adamic lineage of things and was born supernaturally. His body took on flesh. The Word became flesh. Look at John 1 again. Well, if you haven't ever looked at it before, look at it for the first time. John 1. Looking over here in verse um, 14, and the word or the Logos was made flesh, hallelujah, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory of the only begotten, uh, as on the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, the word, uh, word there is Logos, okay, was made flesh. See, the very word, the incarnate word became flesh. Now remember, Mary, this is going to take more than two weeks. <laughs> Mary, when the angel came to her and told her that she would bring forth a son, and she says, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel said, the thing that the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and come upon you, and that thing born of you shall uh, be called the Son of God. Amen? Amen. And then the angel said this, for, no, for, um, for with God all things are possible. All right? In the Greek, it literally says, no word from God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. Well, hallelujah. No word from God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. <laughs> That'll make you shout. Amen. Amen. And so the angel comes to Mary, tells her, and she's saying, how shall it be? And he tells her, and he says, for no word from God, and the word there is rhema in the Greek, okay, is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. Woo, glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, but Jesus recognized Satan as the prince of this world. Listen. The prince of the, John 14, 30, for the prince of this world cometh. Who's he calling him? He's calling Satan the prince of this world. He didn't call him he without authority, he without power, he without dominion. Call him the prince of this world. Um, the revelation that, that Paul received, he even is called the God of this world. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 4. And we'll look at uh, oh, one. Therefore, we have sent this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? Lost. 
Why? Next verse. In whom the God of this world. Now wait, I know it's little g, but it's still, he's still called <coughs> the God of this world. But I thought God was in control. God's, at, God's in control. No, the Bible actually says it's calling Satan the God of this world. Mm -hmm. Hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should come unto them. <clears throat> Satan is called the God of this world. He's, he's running stuff. The world's so messed up right now. The only, only Satan could be doing the stuff he's, that's going on. It, it's not God. God's not going around. And you know, I remember about 15 years ago, y'all remember, uh, every time we turn around, some child was being kidnapped somewhere. All over the country. And it's like hell just opened up and release demons out there, and they went around and started attacking children all over the place. And then, you know, um, a few years ago when the Supreme Court ruled that homosexual marriage was, le was legal, and the White House put the rainbow colors up on it, all of a sudden, everything on the planet is homosexual. It's just been unleashed. Now we're getting into our schools where we're telling our kids, you know, you don't know if you're a male, you don't know if you're a boy, if you're a girl. Uh, I think one uh, trans teacher got in front of their elementary schools and said, you know, when, when, a, when a baby is born, the doctors, uh, you know, say it's a boy or a girl. And some, most of the time they're right, but sometimes they're wrong and it, it's not. The boy, girl is a boy or a girl, the boy is a girl. This stuff is going on. And they're indoctrinating children and wanting them to put them on, you know, uh, hormone suppressant drugs at three at uh, third grade. That's not God. It's perversion. It's unleashed from hell. And now you got every channel on television. I mean, you can't even turn on the uh, the former gift card company channel. We will not use their name, so they can't sue me. You can't use that. You can't turn their channel on now without lesbians or homosexuals kissing during Romance Month. And you're like, <laughs> gag a maggot. Well, what's happened? Hell has unleashed this <clears throat> spirit of perversion. Why? Because Satan is the god of this world. God's not unleashing homosexual spirits. He says that, that's, that, 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 that the homosexuality is an abomination to him. So he's not sending that spirit to the earth. He says he tempts no man with evil. So it's not him doing it. If he tempts no man with evil and he calls things evil, then he's not sending the evil. Hello. Whom the, so Satan's called the God of this world. Um, Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, or some translations say, in heavenly places. Again, demon spirits are ruling over man. Now, remember the story of Daniel when he set himself to pray and prayed three weeks, and finally the angel showed up and said, I was dispatched, I'm going to just use a modern term, I was dispatched three weeks ago. But the prince of Persia, not the one ruling on the earth, the spiritual prince of Persia withstood me. And finally, after battling with that for three weeks, he said, the Lord doth rebuke thee. And he, he, he showed up. Okay? See, that spirit ruled over that area. Under 
Satan's authority. He has set up a hierarchy of demonic spirits that rule over men, over nations. <coughs> you can go in certain nations and certain sins are prevalent there. Hello. I mean, you, you, you can walk into certain places and tell what kind of spirits are in operation. I've been there. I've, I've walked into places and you just, ooh, it, it just, it was, the, the atmosphere was charged with demonic energy. Now, it, it doesn't affect us. I mean, if, if we know how our rights in Christ, we, we can just shake it off and go on. But it's ruling there. I've been in cities. There's cities in this state I can go into and tell you there's an educational spirit. Now, listen, I'm not talking about education. There is a demonic educational spirit that turns man's thinking anti-Christ. Okay? Um, some of the most perverse people you ever hear about are like college professors and intellectuals. Their, 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 their fantasies about um, things are perverse. They're the ones pushing for little children to be told that they're boys and not girls or their girls are not boys. Why? They're living out some type of perverse fantasy. The ones writing the books. Okay? And those spirits, you, you, I mean, I said this 25, 30 years ago about um, uh, our, one of our state university cities up in the northern mountains, and I'll leave it there. You, you could sense that spirit in that city, just driving into it. Okay, well, I've traveled around the world, and I've been in places. And when you get there, man, you can you can pick up on those demons. You're like, oh my gosh. You know, there's such there's such a um, a, a perverseness in the atmosphere. Like when I went to Thailand, <clears throat> they're one of the world's largest traffickers of of uh, sex of, of children. Sex traffickers. Because rich businessmen from Europe will come there, go up to a village, offer the village $50,000 for this little girl, and the chief of the village will go over and take it from the parents and say, this will feed our village for a year and give the person the child. They'll take off with them. And you, you pick up on the, that activity in the realm of the spirit. There's something not right here. Okay? These are the princes. These are the, these are the principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Just like the, deep, the prince of Persia battling with the angel of the Lord, you know, to keep him from getting the da angel from getting to Daniel. All right? Um, the natural man walks according to the rule. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, you back up there, and it says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Look at verse 3 among whom also we all had our conversation. Now remember, conversation was a matter of like, Greek was, was a, uh, the King Jimmy translators used the word conversation to translate um, the meaning of manner of life or how you lived. Okay? Um, I, I got to think back to, you know, 1611, maybe that word meant what it means there, but it don't, today conversation means talking to each other. But obviously back in that era, it had a it connota had different connotation to it. But, in the Greek modern, you know, to take that and, and use modern language, it means the manner of life, the way you live. And then we also had our manner of life in times past. What? Among whom also what? The children of disobedience. And well, listen to what it says. In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the, de fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. What do you mean the children of wrath? Ch the children of whom God's wrath was going to come on. And what, what, where, who? That spirit of disobedience. Who is that? The prince of the power of the air. Satan. The prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Jesus declared that I'm in the earth. And that really just tore Satan's jaws. Because he couldn't do anything with Jesus. 
He tried to drown him. He tried to throw him off cliffs. He tried all kinds of stuff. And until, remember, Jesus said, I lay my life down and take it up again. No man taketh it from me. Until he laid his life down, Satan couldn't do anything. Okay? And so here we have scriptures that tell us with great clarity Satan is running the earth. Now, where is he not running it? Where believers are taking their authority and standing in their rights. Amen. But you can't cast all the demons into hell. How do you know? Jesus didn't. Why? Because it wasn't the time. Have you come to cast us into the pit before the time? Now, I don't have that scripture in my notes. I just, as I started down this path, I, I thought about it. Um, remember the madman of Gary rings. He came to, have you come to cast us into the pit before the time? So Jesus, what did he do? Let it, they said, let us go into the pigs. So he let them go. They all went and jumped in the pigs. Went, pigs didn't even want them. They went and drowned themselves. Jumped off the cliff and drowned themselves. I don't want you either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like, uh, well, we don't want them. <laughs> okay. Um, they cried out and said, what have we to do with Jesus? Thou son of God, art thou come to, hither to torment us before the time. There we go, torment us before the time. All right. Before the time. See, they know they're headed for torment. They know they're headed for um, an eternal spiritual prison house. But Satan got control of this thing from Adam with a time limit on it. And now let's go back. When Jesus shows up and um, goes to the river Jordan, is baptized with John and goes into the, and was led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. Remember that? And after 40 days, he was a hunger. And Satan, uh, Satan comes to him and says, uh, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, um, it is written, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. And then um, Satan takes him up to the pinnacle of the temple or to a high place and shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And here you go. And says, well, let's find that. Let's find that real quick. Because I, I want to make sure we, I, I quote this properly. So I just misquoted that a little bit. Okay, Matthew 4. It's going to be in Matthew 4 somewhere because that's all of them. All right, Matthew 4. <clears throat> okay, he takes it to the pinnacle of the temple and says, if you be the son of God, <clears throat> cast yourself down, um, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee, okay, concerning thee, and in their hands I shall bear thee up, lest thou dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said, it's also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now here's what we're after. <coughs> the third temptation. Remember the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All three Adam and Eve fell in in the Garden of Eden. Jesus overcame all three with the word. And again, the devil taketh him to an exceeding high mountain and showeth him. And we're talking about in the spirit now. All the kingdoms in the world. It's not just the earthly king. <coughs> He's talking about that spiritual ruling over the earth that Adam had in the garden. Showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now listen to what Satan says. And he saith unto him, all these things will I give thee. Um, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Let me stop here because verse 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Uh, who else covers this story? Huh? Okay. Who else covers this story? Come on. Quick, 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 quick. Is it Luke? There's a, certain, there's a certain phraseology in it. Luke 4. Okay. Here, that's, I'm after Luke's version. Okay. Take them into a high mountain, show them the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power. Now, remember power is exosia here. It's authority. All this authority. Not just dunamis miracle power 
All this authority, exousia, E-X-O-U-S-I-A, all right? Um, will I give thee and the glory of them, listen, listen, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I will give it. If thou wilt therefore worship me, all shall be thine. People go, well, Satan's a liar. He, he wasn't telling the truth. The part where he wasn't telling the truth was, I'll give it to you. See, this would not have been a bona fide temptation if he didn't have the authority of the kingdoms. Okay? He had the authority of the kingdoms. He said, I have the authority. And listen, he said it was delivered to me. When was it delivered to him? In the Garden of Eden by Adam. Folks, this is what Jesus came for. He came to get the authority back to liberate humanity. And Satan's here in the temptation after 40 days. And he don't play fair. Jesus has been 40 days fasting. Satan shows up and goes, hey, I know why you're here. Now, those two things I did, just, you know, just messing with you. <laughs> really? <clears throat> but this is why you're here. You're here to get the kingdoms. You're here to get the authority. And I'll give it to you under one condition. If you'll fall down and worship me, I'll give it to you. Now, see, when Satan tempted Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, and they succumbed to that and, and committed high treason against God, and turned it over to the devil. And he was born again. And we, we see the nature of man change so quickly. I mean, you got, you know, brother rising up and killing brother. The, we get to Noah, not that far down the road. And the earth is so perverse, God's got to wipe it out. Hello? Because their sin is so great. Okay? And Satan's coming to Jesus going, Hey, all right, here's the bottom line. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit and, and, and <coughs> dramatize. I know why you're here. You're here to get the authority. You're here to take back the authority that Adam gave me in the Garden of Eden. Hello. And... It was given to me. You, you see, see, because God is, is, is just and God lives by his own law. See, sovereignty doesn't allow you to circumvent your own law. Why? Because then you can become a liar. And the Bible has already stated that Satan is the God or the father of all liars. For God to lie would make him subordinate to Satan. He can't do it. So, you know, Satan tells Jesus, the, I ha the authority of them, I'll give you. It was delivered to me, and I can give it to whoever I want to. See, only the one who possesses it can give it away. Adam possessed it and gave it away. Satan now possesses it. Now, Jesus knows this. This is what he's here for. He was sent from the Father to regain man's authority <clears throat> and take it away from the devil. The lie that are in this temptation was, I'll give it to you. Satan had no intention of giving it to him. What would happen? He would then be the ruler of everything that God created, even his son, or the second person of the Godhead. Satan would have done what he tried to do in Ezekiel. I will ascend my throne to the heavens. I'll be as the most high. You see, Satan tried to overthrow heaven. He wasn't satisfied with getting the earth. As a matter of fact, Ezekiel took place before uh, Adam and Eve. The, 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 the part passage in Ezekiel on Morning Star, talking about, talking about Satan, Lucifer. 
when he tried to overthrow heaven. That took place before then. A lot of people believe that's where Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, what we refer to as the gap theory, where King James says, in the beginning was the word, I mean, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form. The Hebrew word was can also be translated became. And so there's many that believe, and I, I personally adhere to this. It won't send you to heaven or hell if you don't, but it's, you know, uh, it, it explains a whole lot, you know, um, that that became void and without form was when Satan tried to overthrow the heavens and he was cast as profane from the presence of God. And when he came to the earth, uh, it messed, it, it just like he ran into the earth and just br brought great chaos to the earth and God had to come back in and put everything back in order. What we call the seven days of creation was really the uh, reorganizing of creation. Yeah. Whether you believe that or not, we're not going to fall out of it because I, 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 it's not a foundational doctrine of the church. You can believe that and still go to heaven. You cannot believe that and still go to heaven. Okay? It's not, it's imperative to believe that. But it explains a lot of things. It explains spirits wanting to rule over certain areas. It explains, you know, uh, that it, it explains Satan coming to earth. Science has proven there's been two major floods on the earth. The flood of Noah and another one. But the other one would, would have been there because the Spirit of God brooded upon the face of the earth. Okay, um, But Satan was trying to overthrow heaven. His whole purpose all along was to overthrow God and take over heaven. And a third of the angels went with him. He was so powerful in deception that he, he persuaded a third of heaven to follow him. Hello? That's why you need your mind renewed to the Word of God. It's going to take the power of God to keep you straight so that Satan doesn't take over in your life. You, you can be, you can be, you, listen, if you think you can, then that's why we got churches now doing all the stuff they're doing under the guise of love or grace or whatever that is so you just shake your head and go, where in the world could you get that from? They have all. And they, and they, well, you know, I, I mean, I heard somebody say one time, talking about, you know, homosexuals, well, everybody needs love. That's not love. It's perversion and lust. It's the lust of the flesh. It's not love. I don't care what you say. It's not love. It's, it's perversion. Hello? Well, how can you say it with such authority? Because the Bible does. My, 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 my. Okay? And so, um, <clears throat> Jesus answered and said, Get behind me, Satan. It's written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. See, Jesus was not coming to get it on a back doorway. He was coming to get it straight up. He was going to conquer Satan and defeat Satan. Hello? And put him underfoot and break his authority. Now, the very interesting thing, remember back in Genesis 3.15, that the seed of the woman shall bruise thy head? Okay. Now, that is a Western translation. Okay. Um, you understand, obviously, English is, West, is a Western language. And so you're taking a Western language, translating an Eastern phrase. And so sometimes in that, uh, it's not that we don't get it right, it's just it maybe not carry the full import. Now that phrase literally meant, we're, we're back in Genesis 3, where it says that, you know, you, uh, he shall bruise your head and thou, shalt, and, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay? L that, that, that phrase is an Eastern phrase, and it r literally meant, when he said he'll bruise your head, it literally means out of the Hebrew, Break the authority of. Break the authority of. And, you know, and the seed of the woman shall break the authority of you, and you'll bruise his heel. Now, Jerry Savelle said one time, he said, now down in West Texas, what we would say, he's going to come bust your head. Okay? All right? I mean, he's going to come bust your head. But, it, it, it break, he's, 
The minute that Satan got the authority and God shows up and said, who told you you were naked? He said, the woman you gave me, she did bid me to eat and I ate. What about a woman where the serpent beguiled me and I did eat? What about a serpent? You know, well, I'm going to tell you what, on, dust, you know, on your belly you'll crawl all the days of your life and so forth and so on. And the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God tells Satan right straight up. at the he, He's only had the authority maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes. There's one coming who's going to break your authority. It's kind of hard to enjoy something when you know that, that the enforcer is coming. That's why Satan would, try, would kind of try to kill children. When, when Jesus was born, he knew the prophecy. And, and, and the prophecy, and they said under two years old, they went and killed all the children in the area under two years old. Mm -hmm. Satan was ravaging to stop this Messiah from gaining, because he knew he was coming to bust his head. He knew he was coming to break his authority. He knew he was coming to take it back. But not just take it back. In the process, he was going to crush his ability to rule and to reign over man by force forever. Because once Jesus got it, the covenant was between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. It's not between God and Jerry. It's not between God and Penny. It's not between God and Matria, Montria. It's not between God and Dennis. It's between God and the man, Christ Jesus. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Meaning what? <clears throat> I can get in on the benefits of it. I can get in on the results of it by being in Christ, but I can't break that covenant because I don't possess that authority in my own right. It's possessed in Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so by being in, that means if I backslide and turn my back on Jesus, I lose out on the benefits of it, but it doesn't break the relationship of the covenant between God and the man Christ Jesus. And Satan knew Jesus was coming for an eternal purpose to break his authority forever. Where he can never regain control. He can never get the throne of God. And as a matter of fact, his destiny was determined to the lake of fire forever. And that's where he's headed. Amen? Remember... After the millennial reign of Christ, death and hell give up their dead, and you know, and they and Satan's loosed, and they whatever, da, 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 da. and then he's cast into the pit, the lake of fire, which is the second death, and that's it. His party's over forever, eternity. There will be no chances. There'll be no nothing. He know he know he knew this. He come down having great wrath, knowing his time was short. Hello? So, hallelujah. Say, again, so Satan didn't hold this authority over man in the beginning. Adam gave it to him. Okay? Um, let me see if I missed anything I want to cover here. Um, Romans chapter 5. Let's, let's maybe run over a couple few verses over there. <clears throat> Verse 12. Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Uh, and so death passed on to all men, for that all have sinned. For unto the law uh, sin was in the world, and sin was not imputed where there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned. See, this is what happened. When Satan got control, death reigned. What we see happening on the earth today is a result of death reigning. All the calamity, all the, the, the hate, all the racism, you know, people. I, and listen, I, that's what just, just irritates me to, to no end about our churches. Going into all this racist mess. 
and standing up and supporting racial things and, I mean, racial groups and all this stuff. I mean, what would you think if I got up and told you that I, that I am, that I'm the, the local Grand Imperial Wizard of the KKK? And we're, we're Christians and we love Jesus. Well, some, some folks be hitting the door. I hope all of you would. And if, if you don't say you would, I might kick in the seat of the pants right now. All right? See? That's just all the devil. But churches buy into it, and churches get up and preach about it, and all this kind of stuff, you know, going about the white folk, and, and then people get to preach about the black folk, and all this kind of stuff. How about, let's just leave all that alone and talk about Jesus folk. See, my answer to racism is not um, acquiescing to some human idea of fixing it. My answer is you change the heart of men. And you change the heart of men with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether I go back and give you 40 acres and a mule today in this hour is not going to fix what some ancestor did. 125 years ago. As a matter of fact, I can trace my ancestry back, and they came over to America after slavery ended. So you can't blame my family for what took place before then. We won't hear. Okay? And let's, let's face it. There was a war fall. Things took place to stop slavery, to break its power and effect. Amen? To liberate people. Glory to God. So we need to recognize that we've moved beyond that. Instead of start trying to dredge stuff up and keep things stirred up and keep going in and saying, well, you owe us, you owe us. I, I can't owe you anything and you don't owe me anything. As a matter of fact, the Word of God tells us not to owe any man anything except to love one another. How about preaching that in our pulpits? Hello? Well, you know, my white brethren and our black brethren. Uh, no, 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 no. How about brethren? Jesus didn't go around. You know, the only time Paul talked about Jews and Greeks was in talking about their, where they came from with the law and the commands of God, but he made of twain one new person. Remember that? For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision, Jew, nor uncircumcision, Greek, avail anything but a new creature. Amen. Hello. Amen. Amen. There is neither Jew nor Greek, Jew nor Gentile, male nor female. In Christ, we're all a new creation. And that's what we need to be preaching. And the church needs to leave this other stuff alone. Except to say, the answer is, get born again. And renew your mind to the Word of God. And stop looking at the color of people's skin to determine, you know, how you're going to treat them. Amen. Or what you think about them. Because somebody came up and wrote a book. And going around publishing their book. And all they're doing is selling the book so they can get rich. That's right. <clears throat> One major organization <coughs> got $80 million in the last two years. You know what they did with it? Bought houses. Mm -hmm. Million dollar houses. Mm -hmm. Rode around and lived uh, sumptuously like kings and priests mm -hmm. on that money. Raised on the back of stirring up racial. Mm -hmm. We got to stop. We've got to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But that spirit that, that drives that is not God. It's not the Holy Ghost. And I don't care if you hoop and holler and spit cotton while you're preaching about it. Don't make it anointed. Hello? You know? I mean, you have some old Pentecostal preacher spitting and screaming and spitting. Like we say spit cotton. That's when your mouth gets dry and start that white. We, we, we spit cotton. That three rows. Or doing the hooping with the Hammond B3. It don't make it anointed. Truth is anointed. Yeah. The Word of God is anointed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How come me to get off on that? Let me look at the verse I was reading to see what made me go over there. Um, death reigned. 
<laughs> Thank you. Death reigned. Death reigned. Are you here? Death is reigning. These mindsets, these narratives in the world is death reigning. The spirit of darkness reigning over the hearts of men. Even though they didn't sin after the similitude of Adam's transgression. High treason. <coughs> Although they did not sin the way Adam sinned, they were living under the consequences of it. What? Under death. Under the kingdom of darkness. The law of sin and death. But not as an offense, so is also the free gift, for through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. For by one man's offense, I'm sorry, and not as it were by one that sins, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more. They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And see, this is what we're talking. This is all this. This whole series of teaching is to lead us to the place of the Bible in the light of our redemption, our position in Christ to reign in life. Because we're living in a fallen world. We're living in a world governed by Satan's spirits and uh, demonic spirits and Satan. But by Jesus Christ, we have become liberated from Satan's domain and Satan's authority, having been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Amen. Translate out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. We now reign. Hallelujah. Death no longer has authority over us. All the suffering of humanity uh, and misery has the reign of Satan written all over it. Satan brings misery. Satan brings pain. Remember Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, the thief cometh not but for two. Now, let me, let me take the King Jimmy off of that. The only reason the thief comes is to kill to steal, and to destroy. Okay? Now, King James, it's a, I like, it's a flowery. You know what I'm saying? The thief cometh not but for two. Okay? And, uh, and again, uh, one reason that the King James has lasted so long is the grammatical structure of it matches the Greek so well. Okay? In its cadence and rhythm. All right? Uh, the, the cadence of the King James, lang the King James language Elizabethan language of that era matched the Greek cadence and structure very well. Okay, so that's why it's it's still so so popular, and it's it's it's, it's, very, it's pretty doggone stinking accurate. Okay, for for a word to word translation. Um. Hallelujah. Amen. And I said that because what did I what did I say about before that? What verse were you going to? Huh? Back it up and say it. See what I said. I moved over to the King James and I lost, I lost that train of that little. Yes, yeah, still. So John 10, 10. The thief cometh not but for, or the only reason the devil comes. Thank you, Cap. Is to steal, to kill, and destroy. Okay. Now, we have a thesis here. Jesus establishes that Satan the thief kills, steals, and destroys. So look around you. At death, at destruction, at um, things stolen, time, life, marriages, children, okay, finances, all things that can be stolen in this world. And then, you know, destruction, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, um, you know, um, lives destroyed, minds destroyed, um, and then killing, death. Jesus said, who's that coming from? He said, the only reason the thief comes is to do this. It's not from God. It's the, it's the devil. 
He steals, he kills, destroys. And then the antithesis, I am come. Okay? Now, wait a second. Stop there before we go any further. What else did Jesus say? He says later, but he says it. I only do those things which I see my Father do. Philip, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Sufficeth us. Sometimes King Jimmy's hard to speak. <laughs> you know, I get tongue-tied on the if this, if this. Okay? Right. Show us the Father is sufficient for us. Okay, how about that? And Jesus said, have I been with you so long? And you don't know yet? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What's he saying? The works that I do, the Father doeth them. I only do those things which I see my Father do. Okay. So Jesus declares that what he did was, and, and Hebrews bears this out in the first chapter of G Hebrews, saying him being the express image or absolute um, express personage in Hebrews chapter 1, the express image of the Father. He's a mirror of the Father, of the Father's will, of the Father's purposes, of how God the Father does things. Now, Jesus has told, told us, okay, back over in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not more for three reasons, to steal, to kill, to destroy. So where are we going to go? Okay, so the thief, Satan, his kingdom is about stealing, killing, and destroying. It is a kingdom of death. I am come. Now, Jesus now, he gives the antithesis. What's that mean? The opposite. Opposite of what the other one was. He establishes that Satan, who is the God of this world, is ruling under a kingdom of death and destruction and misery. I am come that they might have life. Now, interesting, this is not bios, biological life. Okay, in the Greek, it's not bios. It's zoe. <clears throat> now, zoe is, is uh, in, in um, Koine Greek, bears the meaning of life in the absolute sense. Life in the manner that the Father possesses it. The same life which he, the Father had in himself and in turn gave the Son to have in himself. Who then, in turn, gave it to us to have in ourselves. I have come that they might have zoe, not, not biological life, not a concept of a better life, but they might have the absolute life of God that God has. And not only that, they might have it more abundantly or have it to the full. <coughs> or more literally, that they might live it to the full out of that life. Wow. Wow. So here we have an establishment by the master himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, not some Ph.D., not some, you know, um, doctor. <laughs> you got to watch that with, a, you know, take that with a, a spoon of salt or something, you know. You know, titles, okay, but they, they, in the end of it, they don't mean anything. You know, it doesn't make me a better person with a D.D., <clears throat> Actually, means devil destroyer. I remember Shambot used to preach. He said, I got my BA. <laughs> Amen. And my BHG. I'm born again and I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Brother Shambach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus establishes again, I'm going to say it, is Satan's kingdom is a kingdom of evil, of death, of destruction. My kingdom, on the other hand, is the kingdom of life and living it to the full of what God planned. Romans, remember this, this scripture we quoted um, a, a few years ago when we did the teaching on the life and teachings of Paul, where it says um, that we were to live in the newness of life. That phrase in Romans where he said, live in the newness of life. In the Greek, that meant, and, and different, a different translation bored out, in a whole new sphere altogether. What do you mean? We were translated out of the kingdom of death and destruction into this kingdom of life and life more abundantly, living it to the full, living it, in, it to the max, living it in fullness, this whole new sphere 
of Zoe life. Glory to God. I said glory to God. That's where God called us to. He didn't call, he, Jesus did not come to leave us in the authority of the kingdom of darkness. Remember, Paul wrote and said this, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. What does a, an ambassador have? Diplomatic immunity. Okay? He has diplomatic immunity where? Though we're in this world, we're not of this world, the Scripture says. I've got diplomatic immunity over this kingdom of death and destruction. It has no authority to enforce itself on me. Hello? Okay? Yeah, Romans 6, where he, even so we should walk in newness of life. The Greek is, even so we should walk in this whole new sphere altogether. Now, as, as, as an ambassador for Christ, though I'm in this world, you're in this world. Then I watch as a liar. It is not 815. It is not. It's 813 and 30. Okay. <laughs> No, it's not 815. You're close. <laughs> Though I'm in this world, I'm not of it. I'm an ambassador for Christ. I walk through this world operating, remember, Deuteronomy, you shall have days of heaven on the earth. I'm operating under the diplomatic immunity of Jehovah Nisi, the banner over my life, the banner of victory over my life. That's Jehovah Nisi means our banner of victory. So on my Spiritual vehicle is the banner Jehovah Nisi declaring my diplomatic community from the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of death, the kingdom of Satan. He cannot enforce on me. Amen. And if he tries, I have the right to reject it and not allow it to operate. <clears throat> and he can't do anything about it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Praise be to Jesus. So Satan has brought a flood out of misery, of suffering. This kingdom of darkness, of death. Adam gave it to him. Think about it. And even in that, God created covenants with man, starting with, with Adam. Now, some people pronounce it Adamic, some of it Adamic covenant. And then we have the Mosaic covenant, or the, the Noah, Noahic covenant. And then we have, um, uh, after that, we have the Abrahamic covenant. And then we get the Mosaic covenant, um, which was an extension of, of the Abrahamic covenant. Okay? God creates covenants whereby he can work with man to get Messiah here to what? Break the authority of Satan. Hallelujah. Because man was trapped in this kingdom of death and destruction and misery. And Jesus came to break the authority of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to stop there with point one of four. I just about got myself happy. Hallelujah. I love to get to teach like that. <laughs> Amen. The only thing I miss is having a, a, a whiteboard up here where I can write stuff. And um, I enjoyed that at the community center when we were meeting over there. I had that whiteboard I could go right on and draw arrows and circles and all that kind of stuff. What I need is one of them white pads. That I can write on and it show up on the screen. That's what I need. I need one of them. Yeah. Glory to God. And then if you got time kind of teamed with us, you can put it on your computer. <laughs> just saying. Anyway, all right, praise the Lord. Just, just kind of getting out there a little bit further than I need to be. All right. Uh, it's time to give. If you're an offering envelope, grab one. If, if, if you're not grabbing an envelope, that's fine. If you give it electronically, you go ahead and do that. Hallelujah. Um, if, you need, if you need an envelope and you can't find one, 
Brother Joe's going to walk, walk around and find one on the back of a chair somewhere. He's been after me for a month to get him more envelopes. I just hadn't had time to sit down and print them. <laughs> it, it, takes, it takes a little while to do it. Um, you have to hand feed them one at a time. I pray it won't take, won't take envelopes at one at a time. And if you don't do it just right, it'll, it, it, shut, it locks up. And you guys, I mean, it's just, anyway. Why can't you just make it right and put 35 or 40 in there at one time and then do it? Nah. All right. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the tithe and the offering. Thank you for the blessing the people as they give. Thank you for the word tonight that's been given, that it ministers life to our people. In Jesus' name, amen. We bless their giving in accordance with your word. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, all right, I'm over here. <laughs> now, do you keep moving the cameras around? They just move around on automatic. They're moving on their own. You have no, okay. Because I, I keep going, where is it? Where is it? I'm looking around for the red light. It's over there now. It was just over here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you like, oh, sometimes I feel like I'm watching a tennis match. <laughs> Argue with the ref over here, over here. <laughs> or the linesman. Oh, there, I'm arguing with the linesman now. Hallelujah. All right. Well, praise God. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Join us again next Wednesday night um, for Expedition Church Online or live. Come out here and be in person with us. We'd love to have you with us on our Wednesday night Bible study. Praise the Lord. And then also join us on Sunday mornings at 1030 as we uh, have our morning service for Sunday. Uh, until we meet again, remember these words for 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that what service born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Love you. God bless you. See you next time at Expedition Church of the Triad. God bless you. Good night.